Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this question here is from the January 2012 LXL C4 um, GCE paper from the old syllabus of C4. And this is a question which is now in the P4 um, specification. So it's the same kind of question that you get in P4. Part A of this question tells us to express this in partial fractions. So partial fractions is when you take a fraction and you split it up into separate parts. You split it up into separate fractions. So it's one whole fraction. It's like the opposite of adding fractions together. So we have this fraction 1 over p times 5 minus p. And we want to split it up into two separate fractions because you have two linear factors in the denominators. So it's going to be something like this. You're going to have this split up into two proper fractions. So you're going to have a, a numerator which is constant over p plus another numerator which is also constant over 5 minus p. That's how it's split up into two separate fractions. Now, in order to do that now, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to now multiply both sides of this fraction by the LCM of the denominators, which is p times 5 minus p, in which case... This, this is an identity where this, if you multiply it by p, and p times 5 minus p, the whole thing cancels, leaving with 1 on, on the numerator. If you multiply this by a over p, the p's cancel, leaving you with a times 5 minus p. And if you multiply this by p times 5 minus p, the, p's can, the 5 minus p's cancel, leaving you with just p. So b times p. <clears throat> now, we need to find the value of a and b. Then we've basically got you know, uh, fractions. So to find the values of A and B, there's different methods you could use. Now, one of the methods you can use, in this case, it looks simple to just use some sort of substitution. So if I choose P equals zero and replace the P's with zero, I will eliminate this term and left, be left with just an A term. On the left side, we have one. Here you've got A times five minus zero. And here B times zero is zero. So you've got one equals five A. So we can say a is equal to one fifth. <clears throat> we can also choose p equals five. Why? Because if I put five in here instead of p, this bracket becomes zero. The a term is then eliminated and left with just the b term. So I have one equals a times zero plus five times b. So I've now got one equals five b. So therefore, b is also equal to one fifth. They're both equal to one fifth. So now I can say one over p times five minus p is equal to one over five p plus one over five times five minus p. Okay, so those are the two um, fractions now that this splits up into. Okay, so a is equal to one fifth and b is also equal to one fifth. So there's the answer to part A of this question, which is about partial fractions. It's a pretty simple partial fractions question, so I won't really put it in a separate playlist. But part B is asking us something different. And you can see there's going to maybe some, be some relation to part A, the way this looks. But it says a team of conserv conservationists is studying the population of meerkats on a nature, nature reserve. Meerkats, I don't know how, how you say that word, to be honest. Some sort of... Um, Marsupial, I think, some sort of um, like animal on a nature reserve. The population is modeled by the differential equation dp over dt. dp dt is equal to 1 over 15p times 5 minus p, where t is greater than or equal to 0. Of course, t is time. Where p is in thousands, and it's the population of meerkats, and t is a time measured in years since the study began. Given that when t equals 0, p equals 1, solve this differential equation, giving your answers in the form p equals a over b plus c times e to the power of minus 1 third t. So we've got to take this equation to p dt, and we've got to solve this and find the particular solution for this equation. So let's, let's start off with the original equation, which is dp dt is equal to... 1 over 15 times p 
5 minus p. Okay, so we also know that when time equals 0, p equals 1. So to solve a differential equation, um, we're going to make p the subject, as you can see here. So here we have db to d. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this side with respect to t. Now what I do to one side of the equation, I must do exactly the same thing to the other side. So I'm also going to integrate this with respect to t. Okay, now what I want to do, what you can realize is you can say these cancel out. And I've got, I'm left with here, the integral of dp equals the integral of, well, I can put 1 over 15 out here for 1. Okay, um, p times 5 minus p dt. Now, on the side that says dp, I must have all the p terms. On the side that says dt, I must have all the t terms. Okay, so if I divide both sides by p times 5 minus p, I'll be left with um, 1 over p times 5 minus p dp. And I can even multiply both sides by 15. I can put 15 here. Just get rid of the fraction here. I put, I can, you can write the constant outside the integral sign. So I like to do that normally to make life a bit easier. And here on this side, I'm going to have um, the integral of, well, there's nothing left here except for dt. Now, we're, we, to solve a differential equation, I can integrate both sides now with respect to p on this side and with respect to t on that side now, as, as we can see. But um, I'll be left with a plus c, a constant of integration. Now, if I use these values from this stage, at this stage here, it will make life easier for me. So on the side that says dp, I'll put p on the top, and on dt, I'll put t on the top, and then I'll put the values that I know where, where they are, this, you know, at the same time. When t equals 0, I know when t equals 0, p is equal to 1. So when t equals 0, sorry here, p is equal to 1. Okay? So therefore, I can use those as limits, and that will automatically find the constant of integration for me. So now what I can do is I can integrate both sides with respect to this side to respect to p and that with respect to t. Now here to integrate this, I need to split this into separate fractions, which we already did in part a. So this is going to give us, there's a 15 here. Okay, as we can see from the other side, it's going to give us 1 over 5p plus 1 over 5 times 5 minus p. So you have 1 over 5p. plus 1 over 5 times 5 minus p. Integrate that with respect to p, and integrate this side with respect to t. Okay, so now, further, what I can see, I can see that there's 1 fifth as common, so I can take out that 1 fifth and write this as 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So I've taken out the 1 fifth, and write that's 15 over 5, which is 3. So I've got my limits from p and 1, and now I've got 1 over p plus, I'm just trying to make it a bit simpler for myself, 1 over 5 minus p dp equals the integral between 0 and t of dt. So now I can integrate both these sides. So this is going to be 3. Integrate, integral of 1 over p is lin of the modulus of p. Now I know the population has to be positive. So there's no way that it's going to be a negative number there. So I can just put lin p. Because the population, it's not negative. It can never be negative. Plus the lin of the modulus of 5 minus, well, as I said, you don't need to write modulus. Normally when you, when you, when you integrate something like this, you write lin of the modulus of. But there's no need for the modulus sign here now because population is always positive. So this is lin of 5 minus p, but we have to divide it by minus 1. So we, when we divide it by minus 1, this is going to become negative. Okay, because when you integrate something like this, you, you write it as the lin of the denominator, 5 minus p, and then you divide it by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 5 minus p. So you differentiate 5 minus p, you get minus 1, okay, and you're left with a minus 1 there. And we have now the limits p and 1, okay, 
equals when you integrate t with one one with respect to t, you get t. So my t is going to be between t and zero, and now I can substitute the values in. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just do that on the next page because um, kind of run out of space here. Okay, so now we're going to put the values in. So we have three times, and this is lin of p minus lin of 5 minus p minus, I've got to put 1 in there instead of p, so lin of 1, put the bracket here, minus lin of 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, equals, this is just going to give you t, because you're going to have t in there, minus 0. <coughs> okay, so now, we have 3 times, this is going to give me lin of p over 5 minus p, using the laws of logarithms, minus, this is going to give me minus 0, plus lin 4, equals t. So now I have 3 times, now I can combine these together as well. Um, this is lin of p over 5 minus p, plus lin of 4, so I can use the multiplication law. I can write this as lin of 4p over 5 minus p, equals t. All right, so now I can divide both sides by 3. So I have lin of 4p over 5 minus p is equal to a third t. Now, I want to make p the subject. Let me just move this down here a little bit. I want to make p the subject. So what I can do is I can rewrite this in index form to release this p terms from the lin function. And remember, lin means log to the base e of something. So if I have something like this, I can rewrite it as um, e to the power of b equals a. So I can say here that 4 to the power of, I can say that e, this is e, so I can say that 4p over 5 minus p is equal to e to the power of 1 third t. I can rewrite it like that. And I want to make p the subject. So well, as you can see, there's two p terms. So let me just multiply both sides by 5 mi minus p first, in which case I'll get 5 times e to the power of a third t minus um, p times e to the power of a third t. And bring the p terms on one side, so I'll have 4p plus p e to the power of a third t equals 5 e to the power of a third t. Take out p as common. So I have 4 plus e to the power of a third t. And this is 5 times e to the power of a third t. Okay, I need some more space still. Move this down a bit. Okay, now, um, I can now divide both sides by 4 plus e to the power of a third t. So I have 5 e to the power of one third t over 4 plus e to the power of a third t. T. Now, <clears throat> that's my answer. However, I think that's not the same as what they're asking. Um, so let's try to figure out how we can express them in the same way. So let me take this. That's the answer that they want us to express in that form. And let's see how we can arrange for that to be done. Okay, now. What we, th what I think we can do here, um, is you can multiply both. If I multiply the numerator by e to the power of minus one third t, and therefore the denominator by e to the power of minus one third t, that's the only that's the way you can see. This will get rid of the numerator. Okay, because you'll have e to the power of 0. Um, it'll get rid of the e to the power of 3rd from the numerator, which that, obviously that's happened here. Okay, so if, I'm, if I do that, this will be 5 to the power of e to the... 5 e to the power of a third t times e to the power of minus a third t. And here you'll have 4 e to the power of minus a third t plus e to the power of a third t t times e to the power of minus a third t. Now what's going to happen here, that's going to be 5 times e to the power of 0 over, and this will be 
4 e to the power of negative a third t plus, and this is going to be e to the power of 0. Okay, because you add the powers. Now, e to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. All right, so now let's just, I think we've got the answer now. So p is equal to, this is going to be 5 over, if we rewrite it the other way around, 1 plus 4 e to the power of minus 1 third t, we have our answer in the form that they want us to put, put it. Okay, so we can see here that our a is 5, our b is 1, and our c is 4. Okay, according to this. And there's the answer for part B. And then it says, hence show that the population cannot exceed 5,000. Okay, so remember, the P is in thousands. All right, so hence show that the population cannot exceed 5,000. So what we can do here, <clears throat> um, basically, when T becomes really big, okay, you've basically got this. You've got P5 over 1 plus 4 <coughs> divided by... <laughs> e to the power of a third t. Now, as e to the power of a third t, um, well, let's start start with this. As t approaches infinity, as it gets really big, then we can say 4 over e to the power of a third t becomes 4 over e to the power of infinity because, you know, this if t becomes really big, this becomes e to the power of something really big. Now, 4 over e to the power of infinity would be like 4 over infinity, which approaches 0. That approaches 0. Okay, because if if you have 4 divided, something divided by a really huge number, you're going to get 0. It's going to tend towards 0. So this is going to be 5 over 1 plus 0, which is 5. And as p is in thousands... As p is in thousands, as we know, as p is in thousands, therefore p, all right, will tend towards 5,000. But it will never reach 5,000 because t can never become infinity. Okay, so that's how you could um, show that. Um, in this question. So as so we can see, therefore, as t approaches infinity, p approaches 5, therefore the population, not p, therefore the population will tend towards 5,000. So there's the answer to part c of that question. Um, yeah, I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions about um, this topic of, basically this main topic here was um, differential equations can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area somewhere down here. On the top here will be the playlist. Um, once I get around to answering more questions or I'm asked to more, answer more questions from this particular paper, you'll find the playlist for this paper up here. You will also be able to subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. I'll also have another playlist here for integration in general from P4. Thank you for watching and see you soon.